Hello and welcome to the workout. I am Holly Perkins and today I've got for you a full body strength workout plus cardio. This one is a doozy and I hope you enjoy it. This workout was filmed live and if you ever want to join me for a live workout, come on over to hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout and you can join me and my 25 or 30 or so friends off camera and join us for a totally free live workout just because it's fun and this is my workout gang. So for today's full body plus cardio, you are going to need a circular hip band. You're gonna need some dumbbells and if you've got an exercise bench, that would be great. If you don't have an exercise bench, something like a sturdy dining room chair or a fold up chair would be great. So we're gonna be working and what I call monster sets or complexes. So we've got three exercises, put back to back with no rest in between, then we take a rest, then we repeat that little complex, and we've got a total of four complexes today. So each one is gonna end with a cardio burst for about 30 seconds. If you've got a timer, you can actually time out 20 to 30 seconds, or you can just count in your head, and obviously you can just follow along with me. So let's get it started. We're gonna go through a couple of movements just to get you prepared for the workout. Start with your feet nice and wide, and we're actually gonna come into a spinal twist. So if you've been with me before, this is one of my favorite prep moves. What you wanna do is make sure that you are really squeezing your booty on the side that you're turning away from, okay? So if you're mirroring left glute, right glute. Squeeze your left, squeeze your right. Also drive in through your abdomen. All of this creates a stable foundation for your spine so that you can just let your arms swing around. It feels so good. It's really great to just release stickiness through the hips and the upper body and the spine. And it just feels good, does it not? And relax, keep your feet separated. Just take your arms up over your head. And on go, what I want you to do is actively reach up to the ceiling as high as you possibly can and go. I want you to think about creating as much length from your fingertips to your ankles as you possibly can. The more you do this very actively, the more you're going to feel your abdominal muscle grab and your lower back muscles start to work. This is your core. Reach, 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 reach like crazy and you're gonna feel that transverse abdominus fire up. That is what we are doing here. And relax. Now let's take a big inhale. Exhale it out, bring your hands behind your body, interlock your fingers, extend your hands back and down so that your chest opens up. The whole goal here is to bring your shoulder blades towards each other, to fire up the muscles between your shoulder blades, your rhomboids, your lower traps. It also helps to really open up the chest and the shoulders for the rest of the workout. Take your feet separated, and again, arms up over your head, relaxed, and go. Imagine you're trying to lengthen out the space between your rib cage and your hip bone. Reach up as high as you possibly can. If you feel your back muscles grab, that means you're doing it right. Grab, grab, grab. Reach, reach, reach. Short little breaths. Don't hold your breath. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Let those abs draw in strongly. And relax it out. Great job. Take a big inhale up. Exhale it out. Bring your feet together. Lower your center of gravity so that your knees are slightly bent. Bring your body weight over onto the right leg. Find your balance. Hang out here until your balance stabilizes. Really important that you're keeping that standing knee slightly bent. If you are perfectly stable here, I want you to start to look around your space until you are intentionally throwing your balance off. Use your vision to destabilize yourself so that your leg has to fight to re-stabilize you. This is an incredible physical therapy exercise, but it's we want you to be imbalanced. So you use your vision to challenge yourself so that the muscles of your legs have to really fight and get stronger to learn how to stabilize you. It strengthens the arches of your feet 
It strengthens glute medius, it improves core, and it improves your balance. And relax, and let's do the same thing on the other side. Lower your center of gravity so your knees are bent, body weight onto your left. And if you can just hang out here, piece of cake, you're not doing the exercise right. That's not the goal of the exercise. The goal of the exercise is to lose your balance. If you have to tap down and restabilize, you're doing it right. So look around and you'll notice in about 10 or 15 seconds, you're gonna start to feel the outside of your hip, which is glute medius right here, start to fire up and activate to really strengthen and stabilize the hip. So good for your feet, so good for your sense of balance. And just really, your job is to destabilize yourself. Use your hands to counterbalance, okay? And you'll feel your legs should get warm and tired. This should be hard. If it's not, I want you to look up and look down and really look all around your space and relax. It's a powerful exercise, isn't it? It's so good. Take your feet separated. Feet are truly parallel to each other. Bend your knees, push your hips back, and then I want you to come side to side. Now, when you're coming side to side, it's really important, bend your knees, push those hips back, keep this neutral little bit of an arch in your lower back as you're coming side to side. Really important. And you can just stay with a little bit of a shallow lunge if that keeps your back and your hips happy and healthy. And then as this starts to feel good, as your body gets warmed up and prepped for the workout, you can sit deeper, coming all the way down to cross across the toe and the foot so that you can sit very deeply into that bending leg. This is such a good prep for the hamstrings and the glutes. No pressure on your toes, put everything onto that bending leg and in particular the heel. Push your hips back, super deep. Gonna get a great stretch on your inner thighs while we're warming up the glutes and the hamstrings. And one more. And relax, take your feet together. I'm gonna have you take a big reach up. We're gonna step back into a lunge, bringing the back knee to the ground. You're gonna scoop up, turn towards the leg that's in your front. Bring your hand back to your heel, reach up and pause for a moment. This is the world's greatest stretch. You turn towards the leg in front, reach up, bring your hand back to your heel with your back toe tucked under. And then we come forward, step forward, reach up, come back on the other leg. Come down, scoop up, turn towards the leg in front, big reach, pause, enjoy this opening and relax, come forward, step forward, big reach, other side, and we're just gonna continue with the same movement, pausing a little bit shorter here on the stretch, and let's repeat. Come forward, step forward, big reach, other leg. Scoop, hand back. Repeat, we're gonna do it a couple more times. Is that not the best? I will take full ownership for the world's greatest stretch. Relax down, come forward. I made this up myself. It feels so good. Something I do now almost every single day. It's just such an incredible way to open the body and improve your energy. One more time, each leg. Big reach, step back, scoop. And hand. And bring it back down one more. Big reach. And back. And stretch. That's so good. Oh, I love it. And relax. Step forward. As soon as you come up, big reach. Relax. Lift your knees five or six times. Anytime we come up off the floor, you wanna always bring your knees 
up and down to get the blood flow recirculating through your body to bring it back up to your head. Let's get into the workout. So the first three moves, we're gonna do a lateral band step, okay? 12 to 15 repetitions in one direction, 12 to 15 repetitions back. We're then gonna do a dumbbell side raise, and then our cardio burst is to keep the band on and do jumping jacks. Obviously, I will demonstrate when we get to the exercise. Go ahead and put your band on. If you're new to using bands or find them frustrating, the secret is to step in, pull it and step through. Pull it and step through is the best way to get into it instead of trying to slide it up because it's definitely quite challenging. If you've got one of these rubber bands and trying to slide it up, it can just be a real full-time chore. So here we go, we've got lateral band steps. Start with your feet together, bend your knees. You're in a quarter squat here, maybe even a third of a squat. 12 to 15 steps, 12 to 15 steps back. Nice big step now. Make sure that you're stepping with your whole leg. You're not just stepping with your ankle or your lower leg, all right? I'm gonna go back and forth just so I can stay on camera a little bit more for you, but you really wanna make sure you're stepping with your leg, whole leg step, not just a lower leg step. 12 to 15 on each leg, depending on how challenging your band is and where your fitness level is, okay? 12 to 15, you should really feel it in your glutes, especially after our single leg prep exercise. Okay, 24 to 30 in total. Woo, you should be feeling your glutes and in particular glute medius. Grab your dumbbells. Dumbbell side raise, feet together, shoulders back. So important, shoulders back and down, shoulders back and down before every exercise. It's so important, shoulders back, Shoulders down, slight bend in the elbow, straight out. Depending on how heavy your dumbbells are, you're either going to pause at the top or not. If your dumbbells are moderate or light, give me a definitive pause here. If your dumbbells are heavy, get in and out. 12 reps. You wanna use a weight load where these 12 are actually challenging. Got it? should be challenging. Slight bend in your elbow, shoulders back and down, and we're gonna go into our cardio segment. Keep your band on, and we're gonna do jumping jacks. 30 seconds. Let me show you a low impact option if you don't wanna do a full impact option of your jumping jack. And by the way, this is actually an awesome exercise if you don't want to do jumping jacks. Oh my gosh, this is like double on the glutes. Otherwise, we got 30 seconds for jumping jacks. Arms out to the side. You can also take them way up over your head. You can move faster, move slower, what works for you. 20 to 30 seconds here. Keeping your energy up, high energy. We wanna get that heart rate up. That's the whole goal here, to get the heart rate up. And relax. Please walk around your space, but be careful because you got a band on your knees. Take about 20 seconds to walk around your space, letting your heart rate come down a little. And then we're gonna repeat this complex, these three exercises, okay? So, depending on how your lateral band step felt, you might need a heavier band. If it needs to be harder, take bigger steps. If you're stuck with a, the band that you have and you need it to be harder, you can take more steps. The best way to make lateral band harder is to sit deeper and to take bigger steps. That way you don't have to change your band, okay? Here we go, second set, repeating these three exercises. Feet together, bend your knees, hips are back, quarter squat, lock it in, neutral natural curvature in your lower back, and we step out with the whole foot. Whole foot, 
12 to 15 in one direction, and then 12 to 15 back, okay? Stay nice and low. Keep that neutral, natural curvature in your lower back. And you really should feel the glutes, in particular, the lateral aspect of your glutes, because we're hitting glute medius, glute minimus here. Make sure that you are bending at the knees and you wanna make sure that you're keeping a bit of an arch in your lower back. 12 to 15, grab your dumbbells for dumbbell side raise for shoulders. If you learn nothing else from me, please learn shoulders back, which is shoulder retraction, shoulders down, which is shoulder depression. This right here will change your life for every exercise you do. Shoulders back and down way before you ever move, especially if you have shoulder problems, you must learn this cue. If your shoulders crack and crunch and pop, you must learn this cue. Shoulders back and down. And if you are finding that this exercise or this weight load is doable for you, give me a bit more pause at the top. Big pause if you have to. And if your weight load is challenging, you're gonna get in and out of the exercise. 12 reps with a weight load that's challenging. And then we're gonna go into our next cardio round. Again, you can keep it low intensity if you want. Here we go. Low intensity if you don't wanna be jumping, okay? And remember, even if you do wanna be jumping, you can do it for five seconds on and five seconds off if you want. You don't have to do the full 20 to 30 seconds here. Find the right intensity for you. This is meant to get your heart rate up. This is meant to be challenging. And relax it out. Walk it about. Let your heart rate recover. Please don't stand still. Grab a drink of water. Turn your music up. And if you're gonna do a third set of those three moves, go for it. If you're not, let's take that band off. Let me show you our next three exercises. Goblet squat, tricep dip from your bench or chair. Then we've got skiers, high intensity, low intensity. I will show you how to do it when we get there. So first exercise is a goblet squat. So you're gonna want a heavier dumbbell. For this exercise, you can use the dumbbell that you just used for that side raise. But the truth is, you really should be able to do a heavier weight load on your goblet squat than you could on your side raise. Now listen, if you're new to my workout, this is a strength-based workout. This isn't a boot camp class. This isn't just to get your heart rate up. This isn't a cardio workout, even though there are these cardio boosts. This is still a strength training workout, so you need a weight load where 12 reps on your goblet squat are hard. Toes are turned open for goblet squat, and your weight is right at your chest. Chest is up, tummy in, and we've got 12 reps. Straight down, stand and squeeze your booty. Now, your weight load should be so challenging that you gotta slow down. So if you're buzzing through these super fast and you're like, that Holly Perkins moves too slow, that's on you, my friend, because your weight should slow you down. If your dumbbell or kettlebell is not heavy enough and you can fly through this, you're not challenging yourself enough and you're not gonna get stronger. So find the weight load where these 12 reps are hard one more and then we've got tricep dip from a chair or a bench whichever works for you you can do this from a standard dining room chair just fine you can do this from 
the edge of a, ch of a living room chair or your kitchen couch, uh, sorry, living room couch, unless you have a couch in your kitchen, that could work too. <laughs> Hands go under your hips, right at the width of your hips so that your palm is below your shoulder, okay? Palm shouldn't be outside your shoulder. Palm is directly under your shoulder, and that's usually at the width of your hips. If you've got wider shoulders, wider hands. Feet out together. Please follow, bend your knees, and we're gonna go straight down and straight up. Lift your chest. Super high, you got 12 reps here. All the way up, lifting with your chest, super high. Making sure that you're doing this with the knees bent. I'm not a fan of straight legs here. And ideally, your surface is high enough that at the bottom, your upper arm is about parallel with the floor. 12 reps and relax. Cardio segment. We've got skiers. Let me show you um, low intensity first and then we'll go into high intensity. Low intensity is right here. Moving quickly though, because we do want your heart rate to come up. All right, you guys ready? Let's start. High intensity is just bringing this up with no break. Let's go, here you go. Okay, just swapping the legs and feet. You can also keep smaller arms if you want. And if you want a higher intensity, just bring those arms up and make it a lot harder up, okay? Couple more seconds. And walk it out, good job. Walk it out, let your heart rate recover. Please don't stop moving, keep it moving. Walking it out and we're gonna do a second set of these same exact three exercises. How was that goblet squat? And if you're like, oh, it was good. If goblet squat was good, you need a heavier weight load. You should say, damn. I don't know if I'm allowed to swear here. I'm probably gonna get in trouble by YouTube, but darn, YouTube. Those goblet squats were hard, right? You should be able to be like, oh, whoo, oh, those goblet squats. Those 12 reps were hard. And if you're not saying that, I want you to grab a heavier dumbbell. You ready for round two? Grab that weight load that's right for you. Toes are open, chest is up. Make sure you're keeping your weight load in contact with your upper chest. And 12 reps, so much so that your weight load slows you down. Chest is up at the bottom. Your hips should be below your knees. Here for a proper goblet squat. Press your knees away from each other. Keep your chest lifted. Drop the hips down. Keeping your dumbbell or kettlebell in contact with your upper chest. That's really important. Okay? And relax. Tricep dips. 12 to 15, depending on how hard they are for you. If your tricep dips at 15 are easy, you can add a dumbbell across your hips so that you're weighting your tricep dip. You could just put a little, ideally it would be a circular dumbbell, but whatevs. Hands are under your hips, feet are out, keep your knees bent, no straight knees. Straight down, press up super tall. You want to really lift your chest at the top, getting full contraction at the top, lifting that chest high, still keeping your shoulder blades back and down. Here, shoulder blades back and down, chest is up, 12 reps. They should be challenging, especially if you added a dumbbell. And let's go in for that cardio segment. Low intensity or full intensity. Alternating skiers, whatever works for you. 
20 to 30 seconds. Are you ready? Pick your poison, high intensity, low intensity, whole goal is to get that heart rate up. Let's go. Get that heart rate up. Move those feet as quickly as you can, staying safe. Obviously, make it a very safe movement at the speed that feels best for you. You can make this low intensity totally cool. Promise me you're wearing athletic shoes for this exercise. A few more seconds and walk it out. Good job, walk it out, walk it out. So, if you're not wearing athletic shoes, please grab them. In this part of town, athletic shoes are important no matter what you're doing. Even if you're exercising at home on your carpet and you're in your bedroom, your feet still need support. Your feet need that support. Go for a third round of those three exercises if you like. Otherwise, we're moving into the next complex of three exercises. We've got a lying dumbbell pullover from your bench or the floor. Dumbbell chest fly from the bench or the floor. Then you're gonna need either a bench or a standard dining room chair for bench hops, which I'll demonstrate when, actually I'm gonna demonstrate now so that you can get prepared because you can do this with a chair if you've got a bench. We are here and we are just hopping up and over, going at the speed that's right for you in terms of your ability and your safety. If you're using a dining room chair, it's exactly the same thing. Just put your hands on the seat of the chair and you're just gonna hop side to side as if you were jumping over the bench, even if you don't have a bench. Cool? Okay, let's do this. First exercise is, actually that's gonna, hold on, bear with me guys. It's gonna work a little better just like that. First exercise is lying dumbbell pullover. Grab yourself a heavy dumbbell. You can do this from the floor if you don't have an exercise bench. Dumbbells up over your chest. Press your shoulders to your hips. Here we go, up and over. Pull through. Now, this is one of my favorite exercises ever. And if you do it my way, you really will be able to handle a substantial weight load here. Most people should be doing at least 10 pounds. Of course, that depends on your fitness level and your history. But if you're really using your lats, the big muscle of your back, the way that I want you to, you should be able to do 10 pounds here. Big pull through 12 reps, you ready? One more. And then you're gonna want a slightly lighter set of dumbbells. And we're coming into dumbbell chest fly. Once again, if you don't have an exercise bench, you can do this from the floor. Shoulders pushing towards your hips, opening out with a slight bend at your elbows. Bend at the elbow. So if you're on the floor, you're just gonna let your upper arms just gently tap the floor before you pull back up. If you're limited by your dumbbell weight load, you're just going to give yourself a pause, pause, pull. Pause, pause, pull, okay? 12 reps. And relax, dumbbells aside, and we're gonna do those bench hops, or like I said, if you just have a chair of some sort, that works. Ready? 20 to 30 seconds here, hands are on your bench or on your chair. Hold on, I lost the little stabilizer on my bench, and I do need it for this exercise, there we go. Okay, hands are on your bench, tummy drawn in, lift those feet. 30 seconds, here we go. Going at whatever pace feels right for you, faster or slower. Use your core. Using a chair if you need to. And 
and walk it out. Keep moving. Make sure that you don't just stop moving. You want to use the musculature in your legs to help return that blood flow back up to the rest of your body and your brain. Short little break here. Assess, how do those three exercises feel? Do you need to make any changes? Heavier, different chair or bench. If you're on the floor for the first two exercises, chances are you can probably do them with a pretty heavy weight because the floor is limiting your range of motion. One of the reasons why I love an exercise bench. So, short break, we're going into next round. Dumbbell pullover, chest fly. If that dumbbell pullover was doable for you and you've got a heavier dumbbell, please grab it. I really want the last two reps of every single set. You should be cursing me a little bit. Okay, they should be challenging. And if the last two reps aren't challenging, you're not challenging yourself. Dumbbell starts up over your chest. Again, you can do this on the floor. It's great on the floor. Shoulders are anchoring towards your hips. Here we go. Big reach. Make sure that you're breathing. Really push your shoulders, anchor your shoulders towards your hips, especially right here. So even though your arms and that dumbbell is up over your head, you wanna counterbalance that lever where the dumbbell is and really anchor your shoulders towards your hips. That's where you're gonna get the best out of this exercise. 12 reps, last two should be challenging. And dumbbell chest fly, grab the weight load that works for you. Really and truly, if you don't have an exercise bench, this works great on the floor. Shoulders down, open it out. Give me a pause at the bottom if your weight loads are light. If you got light dumbbells like I do today, you're gonna pause right there before you pull it up. The lighter your dumbbells, the longer the pause. You can even pause for up to five seconds here. Now, if you're on the floor, that doesn't mean you're releasing your tension and letting your arms drop to the floor, okay? You're still keeping tension, hovering your legs, sorry, hovering your arms above the floor. Push your shoulders towards your hips, 12 reps. One more and relax. We got our next cardio segment here. Pick your poison. Are you using a bench, a chair, a table? Literally the point of this exercise is just to be hopping side to side so that it gets your heart rate up using your core and you can do this a variety of ways. Um, I love an exercise bench, but you don't have to have it, okay? 30 seconds, you ready? Hands are firmly in place, tummy drawn in, knees are bent. Really keep that tummy drawn in nice and tight, side to side. it out. Keep that heart rate going by moving the legs, facilitating a little bit of recovery here. That should. The higher your bench, the higher your hop, the more it's going to get your heart rate up. That's an awesome little cardio move right there. Okay, you are welcome to go ahead and do a third set there if you want. Otherwise, we're moving on to our next complex of three exercises. So once again, we're gonna be stepping. If you have a bench, that would be ideal. We're gonna be doing bench step ups with dumbbells. If you do not have a bench, you're gonna want maybe 
some stairs in your house. You could use a kitchen chair. If you do not have something to step on, I'm gonna have you do alternating reverse lunges. Just alternating sides with or without dumbbells. This will be the closest thing to a step up. For our step ups, you're gonna use dumbbells either at your sides or at your shoulders. Let me show you our three moves and we'll do them together. Dumbbells either at your sides or at your shoulders. Leading with one leg, we're gonna perform 12 reps with one leg stepping, then we'll switch legs, okay? Second exercise, same dumbbell weight load most likely, shoulders back and down. We've got bicep curl. And third, cardio exercise is the doozy of them all. We're gonna be doing squat jumps, squat jumps for 30 seconds. Cool, grab your dumbbells. We've got bench step ups at your sides or your shoulders. Here we go. Moving at a safe pace. Let your dumbbells challenge you here. You should not be moving fast here. If you're moving fast and you're like getting your heart rate up, I can tell you right now, you're, you're cheating yourself out of the strength that you could be building. So grab yourself heavier dumbbells because the pace should be slowed down because of the heaviness of your dumbbell. And if you don't have heavy enough dumbbells, grab yourself a barbell. This is great with a barbell as well. 12 reps. Same on the other leg. We are leading with one leg. Left leg, left leg, left leg, left leg. 12 reps. Really leading with your chest. Chest, pushing forward, leading, lifting, and pulling you up onto that bench. 12 reps, two more. Hammer curl is next. Same weight load or lighter, shoulders back and down. Hammer curl with your palms facing each other. Give me that pause at the top. Shoulders back and down. Posture super tall. Again, your dumbbells should feel heavy. You should have to really legitimately pull, right? Earlier today, I had a live workout with one of my coaching groups and we did this exercise. A little different, a little different, but we did a bicep exercise and I said to them, if that doesn't crush you, if a set of bicep curls doesn't crush you, you can use a heavier weight load. Cardio segment, we got squat jumps, we're here. Jump at your own speed, ready? Here we go. Now, if you want this to be lower intensity, I want you to just give me a little hop, a little hop. I don't care what your level is, a little hop is good for every single one of us. It doesn't have to be a super high jump. And if you're good, give me a big jump, big jump. Explode with your legs, big. Three more, all the way up. Get that heart rate up and walk it out. Your thighs should be burning and your heart rate should be up. And if it's not, I invite you to challenge yourself a bit more because you're worth it. The way you become more fit is by forcing and pushing yourself into a new intensity in your exercises. You don't wake up more fit tomorrow. You have to choose to make those bench step ups harder and heavier by the weight loads that you're using. And remember, on these step ups in particular, I want you to go slow enough that you can be safe, but I also want you using a weight load that slows you down 
And if you have a barbell, grab it. This is a great exercise to do with a barbell. Depending on the weight of your barbell, you can do it with just the barbell. You can also load it up. And if you don't have a barbell, go ahead and grab those dumbbells. Ready for that second set? Leading with that right leg, 12 reps. Here we go. Right leg up, right leg down. Right leg up, right leg down. Imagine that you're holding 100 pounds. Wouldn't that slow you down? Wouldn't you be like, right? You'd have to be very deliberate with your movement. And if you're not having to be deliberate with your movement, I promise you, my friend, you can do more. 12 reps. And same on the other side. Short break if you want it. Same thing, leading with that left. Lead with your chest. Chest is up. Get that whole foot up on the bench. Tummy drawn in. Standing tall. Chest is lifted. Driving into the heel, up on the bench. 12 reps. One more. And relax. We've got bicep curl next. If you've got yourself a barbell as an option, you can turn this dumbbell hammer curl into a barbell biceps curl. Feet together, shoulders back. Here we go. 12 reps. Barbell or dumbbell. I love a barbell, even if you're working out at home. Get my barbell nice and even, there we go. Even if you're working out at home, listen, there are barbells now, like this one. It's only five feet long. It doesn't take up any space. It's not that heavy. It's 27 pounds, 25 pounds-ish. You can fit this in a closet. I encourage you, if you're committed to working out at home, I really encourage you to consider getting a barbell. It was the best purchase I made outside of an infrared sauna for my house. Last year, best purchase I made, infrared sauna. Second best purchase I made, my barbell. I actually have two barbells now. How about that? Okay, we got squat jumps. Are you ready? Squat jumps, I want you to really give yourself some height. And if you wanna keep this low intensity, I still want a little hop. Hopping is good, irrespective of your fitness level. All right, you ready? Big movement, here we go, 30 seconds, all the way up. All the way up. Lead with your chest, explode with your legs. Use your breath. Super high, give me a bit more. All the way up, 10 seconds. Big jump, big jump, big jump, big jump. One more, one more. Walk it out, good job guys. Whew. Whew. Feel those legs, feel that heart rate. You absolutely should. Walk it out. If you'd like a little more workout, I invite you to perform those three exercises again for a third set. We're gonna walk for about 10 seconds, letting the heart rate come down, and then I'm gonna take you through an ab exercise and a quick little cool down. Walk it out. Grab a drink of water if you need it. Find a comfy space on the floor, and we're gonna do some core work. One superset, two exercises, back to back, focusing on your core. We're on our back first, and first we've got the Mac Daddy of all ab exercises. Please watch, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and ladies, 
You're gonna crunch up with your upper body, okay? Get your tummy drawn in. Use your ab muscles to pull up. Bring your knees in. Cross over, then you begin bicycle crossovers. So you wanna start from the top, from a crunched position, because it sets you up a little bit better, okay? And we're gonna do 15 on each leg for a total of 30, and then we're gonna flip over and do a plank exercise. Hands on your head, use your abs to crunch up, use your abs to pull your knees in, cross over, are you ready? Here we go, 15 each side, which is a total of 30. Twisting with the shoulders. Don't just reach across with your elbow, okay? You're really twisting with the shoulder. Get that shoulder reaching over towards the knee. Even though the elbow is going in the same place, I want you thinking about shoulder, shoulder. Shoulders up off the ground. Shoulders rotating towards that opposite knee. Short little breaths. 15 each side, or more if this is doable for you, and relax. Immediately, we're gonna flip over, and you're gonna come onto your elbows. Make a fist with your hands or clasp them to each other. Elbows are directly under your shoulders. You're gonna step back into an elbow plank, and from here, we're gonna lift one leg, pause, and switch. Join me. So we've got 10 on each leg, 20 in total. The whole point is to lift the leg and pause. 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 The leg that's on the ground is doing the work. Stay strong. The leg on the ground is doing the work. Strong through your abs. 10 or more on each side. One more and relax. Knees down, hands under your shoulders. And we're gonna go into a little cat and cow here. Tuck your toes under. And I want you to round and open. We're gonna do that superset one more time. Contract the muscles of your back when you're looking up. Here, squeeze the muscles of your back. Squeeze your abs, the muscles in front here. Rounding and opening as much as you possibly can. Rounding and opening, really contracting the muscles of your back here. Contracting your abs here. Make it big. Let's do two more. One more. And relax. Come on into your back, and we're going to do that ab superset super one more time. Now, depending on how you felt on that first set, if you'd like to do more, add 10 or 20 reps. You can add 10 reps to those bicycles and go for 40 or 50. You can add 10 reps on your elbow plank and do 20 or 30. I want you to feel challenged at the end of the superset. Draw your abs in, shoulders off the ground. Here we go. Cross it over. Okay, like I said, I want you to really think about crossing, shoulder. Don't just flip flop your, this is not what we're doing. We're not just flip flopping the elbows, okay? We are twisting the torso. Really twist that torso all the way across, reaching with the legs. Abs drawn in, short little breaths. Now it's true, breathing on an exercise like this it's just a little awkward, just a little, okay? Abs drawn in, short little breaths, however you need to. 30 in total here, or more. Those abs, you should feel them. And if you have to take a little break mid-set, that's cool too. Totally cool. And relax, we're flipping over, elbow plank. Now listen, on this elbow plank, a lot of people misunderstand the whole point of this elbow plank is the lower leg is what's powering you. 
So it's the downward leg that you want to be thinking about. Not the, the lifting leg is really just a means to an end. The real exercise, okay, is the downward leg. So coming out into your plank, here we go. Lift one leg and power the downward leg. Pausing with that leg lifted so that you can load that downward leg. Really load. Draw your tummy in. Load that downward leg. Keep your spine long, reaching out through your head. Keep your arms super strong. Abs drawn in. 10 on each side is 20 or more. Whatever works for you. Try not to lock out your knee when you're on it, when you're on that supporting leg. Try not to lock it if you can. Short breaths and relax. Knees to the ground, hands under shoulders, toes are tucked. Let's repeat, cat and cow. <sighs> Round your spine, and then I'm gonna take you through my favorite foot health exercise. So good for the toes. Foot mobility. One more. And relax. Okay, you're gonna look between your knees, bring your feet together, okay? Now, if you have super healthy feet and toes, I want you to touch your ankle bones together so that your four feet and your ankle bones are touching each other. Toes are tucked under. And you're gonna shift your weight back so that you're in a crouched position with your ankle bones together. Now, if you've got painful toe joints, don't force your ankles together, and we're just gonna rock back and forth bringing flexion to the feet and to the toes. If this is easy for you, please put your knees on the floor and I want you to come all the way up and sit for 10 to 15 seconds. And if this is not easy for you, please stay with me and let's work on this rotating forward and back. Now, let me tell you something right now. This is excruciating on my toes excruciating on my toe joints. So the excuse of, I can't do that because it hurts too much. The more this hurts, the more you need to be doing it. And I promise you, the more you do this, the healthier your feet will be. Now, I'm not telling you to injure yourself, okay? But it should be manageably, manageably uncomfortable, okay? And if it's so comfortable for you, and I want you to be able to just totally sit on your feet. And if you can sit on your feet here for 15 minutes, take your shoes off and do that, okay? Relax, let's come to the floor. And I'm gonna have you bring the soles of your feet together. Let your knees relax out. Totally relax, chest up, hands on your arches, and let's just let yourself kind of naturally collapse forward. Listen, you're not pulling yourself forward. We're not pulling. You're just relaxing, let yourself collapse forward. Biggest mistake whenever I have people come here, all you overachievers are like ur, ur, pulling so hard to try and get your forehead down to your feet. That's actually not the point here. The point is just, just relax. Let gravity do the work. And just release your chest towards your feet, towards your ankles. Relax up, press those heels out. You can keep a slight bend in the knee if you want. Sit up nice and tall, hands up out of your head. And I want you again to just relax and come forward until you feel something. You do not have to keep your back straight. You do not have to round your back. You do not have to get your head to the, to the feet or to your legs. Just do whatever you feel as a stretch through your lower back, through your, the back of your thighs, through your upper back, whatever you feel, and let's breathe into it. You can keep your knees straight if you want. You can bend your knees a little if you want. The whole point is really just to release into this, to notice where you feel the stretch. The stretch should mellow out the longer we are here. If your stretch is intensifying, the more time we spend here, that's your cue to ease off a bit. Static stretches like this should ease, 
should mellow the longer we hang in there. And relax and take a comfortable seat. And let's take a big inhale up. Exhale it out, follow along. Right hand is pressing down into the ground. Right hand is pressing down into the ground and you're gonna take your head over to the opposite side. So your right hand to the ground, your head is stretching to your left shoulder to lengthen out this side from your head all the way down to your palm. And relax, same on the other side. Left hand, push to the ground, right ear to the shoulder, lengthening out through that neck. And relax, let's take a big inhale up. Exhale it out. Thank you so much for joining me today. It was so awesome to have you. If you want to join me for a live workout, come on over to hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout. You can sign up to join us live, absolutely free. I'll see you next time.